Well, the first piece of uh, equipment we're going to talk about is the German Martingale. And this is probably my favorite training aid. Uh, uh, if I had nothing else to use, uh, this would be, this would be my, 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 my primary training aid. Um, I like it because it does several things uh, that are critical. And one of the most important things it does is it, is it helps us teach the horse to give to our hands and flex at the pole. Um, ideally, uh, we want our horse, whenever we pick him up, we want him to drop his nose and come off the bit. Whenever we're circling or turning, we want him to give his head to the side, okay? Keep his head in position. For just about any kind of performance horse, the number one control factor is this horse flexing at the pole. If your horse does not flex at the pole and give to your hands, you really can't get him doing good stops and pretty tough to get him doing just about anything right. You know, can't really get him collected up and your, 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 uh, your lead departures and your spins are going to suffer also. So this giving to your hands and flexing at the pole is critical. What I like about the German Martingale and the reason I use it is that it helps the horse, it helps guide the horse into, in the, into the position that you want him to be. Uh, the, the leverage that it gives us, it, it basically works with running leverage. The ropes of this thing uh, take effect and actually give a draw rein effect when his head is out of position. Once his head comes into position, we no longer have a draw rein effect. He's just on straight reins and we can have a good feel of his mouth. Uh, my biggest complaint about regular draw reins is that you can't really feel the horse's mouth because of all the running leverage. With the German Martingale, the only time you have leverage is when the horse goes out of position. And, and uh, as soon as it comes into position, you have no more leverage. You're on straight reins and you can get a good positive feel of that horse's mouth. Now, uh, what I'll do is, is I'm going to step off and uh, uh, show you how we adjust this thing and then I'll get back on and demonstrate how to use it. Okay, uh, as you can see with this horse standing here, we have a piece of white rope. This is our leverage. This is our draw rein and it's attached by a snap to our regular, to our regular uh, leather rein that uh, is attached to the snaffle bit. Now, as you can see, if I pick up the reins, put pressure, his nose comes right down. And it comes down because the draw rein effect of this white rope, you know, guides it that direction, okay? And as soon as it's down there, you notice we're on the leather reins. There's no more, there's no more loop in the, in the uh, leather reins. Now, the adjustment of this is pretty critical. If you adjust it too loose, it's not going to have any effect at all. If you adjust it too tight, then you're going to have uh, uh, too much of a draw rein effect. It's going to bring his head into his chest, and we don't want that either. We want to adjust it just so it, it brings his head to the vertical. Okay? When I when I you work the reins, the draw rein brings his head. See how it's straight up and down, vertical to the ground. And that's about as far as you want it to go. It wouldn't hurt if it's a little bit more than that, but, but you sure don't want to bring it way back, okay? So let me undo it here so I can show you how we set this up. And as you can see, we just have a snap that snaps into the, the, the um, D-ring in the center of the cinch. And this has adjustments on it also. We can, we can, we can uh, shorten up this part of it so it'll actually give us more adjustment up here. But I'll snap that into the, the D-ring of the cinch, right between his front legs. And then this is basically just a piece of nylon rope with a snap on the end of it. Now, it is important that you bring this snap through the ring of the snaffle from the inside out. Okay, I started from the inside and brought it out. That's pretty critical. Now, I'm going to snap it into the first ring here. 
and I'll show you what that adjustment looks like. Do it on the other side here also. Okay, now when he takes his head way up, you see the loop we have here in the, the leather rein, okay? When I work the reins, the draw rein is going to bring his nose down. Now right there, when, all, when there's no longer any loop, we're no longer on any draw rein effect. We're on straight reins. And you'll see his head's kind of in a natural position there. It's not vertical. And that's really not enough for what you're trying to accomplish with most horses. Most horses, you want to adjust this, take it to the second ring in the reins. And we'll take and put his head up. Now you see the loop is a lot bigger here in the in the leather reins now. But when I work the reins, it brings his head right down into vertical position. Okay, now this piece of equipment is designed to be used with a ring snaffle only. It's not designed to be used with the curb bit. If, if your bit has any kind of shanks on it, this isn't this is not designed to go on a bit with shanks. You can use it with a regular ring snaffle, you can use it with a twisted wire snaffle or a smooth wire snaffle. But it has to be, you know, a ring bit, or it could be either loose ring or D-ring with no leverage. Uh, that's what it's designed to be used with. Okay, so we pretty much have it set up. We have it adjusted uh, for this horse. Um, and these things can adjust a wide range of horses. They'll fit a very small horse uh, if you need to shorten the lower piece up here you can to fit a really small horse or you you can let it out to fit a really large horse but i'm going to get up in the saddle and demonstrate how to use this piece of equipment <clears throat> okay there really isn't much preliminary work that you have to do uh, to get started using the german martingale but you do want to give him the basic understanding of what, where you want his head to go when you apply pressure on the bit. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just pick up the reins. I'll have my hands out in front of the saddle so that my reins are short. I'll put a little pressure in his mouth and hold it. And see, as soon as he, as soon as he gave to that, I'm going to give him slack. Now, a green horse, this horse knows how to give to pressure. But on a green horse that doesn't, you might have to hold him for... A minute or two until he starts to drop his nose. Now, if he just drops his nose even a half an inch, you want to give him the slack. You want him to know right away that dropping his nose to that pressure is what gets him the release. Okay, that's his reward. The release of pressure is his reward. So then I'll pick him up again. He drops his nose, I give him the release again. Now, some horses that are really dull in the mouth are really heavy in the mouth are really stiff in the pole, you might have to, to check them up on the ground first. And I show that in some of my other videos, so I'll just, I'll just kind of go over the, the quick basics of it here. What you can do from the ground is, I'll step off so I can demonstrate this. I'll just, I won't use the German Martingale to do this at first, I'll just use a regular snaffle and regular reins. And I'll put, um, I'll take the reins and I'll tie the reins uh, back to the saddle, either around the swells or I'll tie the rein to the D in the saddle rigging here. And I'll adjust it so that there's just a little bit of pressure in that horse's mouth. I mean, just a, a tiny bit. And I'll just turn him loose in a pen or the arena or something. And he'll, he'll put pressure on that himself and learn to give to it. Now, I caution you. If you, if you start that out with the reins too tight and having too much pressure, he may, he may panic uh, not knowing how to relieve that pressure, and, and then you'll have a bad result. So good insurance, if you're going to check your horse up, you might get a bungee cord or a piece of inner tube and attach that to your saddle and then tie your rein to that bungee cord or inner tube. And that will give you a little bit of an elastic effect. So that if the horse does really pull on it, it'll give to him a little bit, but still maintain some pressure in his mouth. And that way he can learn to drop off of it and he won't panic, okay? 